Welcome to the Strategy and Leadership Podcast, the podcast that brings you practical advice, lessons, and stories from senior leaders and thought leaders from around the world. The Strategy and Leadership Podcast is brought to you by SME Strategy, working with organizations around the world to create and implement their strategic plans. To learn more, visit smestrategy.net. And now, your host, Anthony Taylor. Hey there, folks. Welcome to today's episode of the Strategy and Leadership Podcast. My guest today is Maria Sampson. Uh, I'm going to try to capture her bio as best as possible, but Maria has represented Canada 21 times internationally as a member of the Canadian National Women's Rugby Team, was named Rugby Canada's Player of the Year in 2012, and also she's an active board member in Cap Gemini's Women in Rugby Leadership Program. She's also involved in other organizations in rugby, has an amazing career in professional sports, in leadership, in the men's and women's side. I think that's most of it. Maria, how are you? I am doing great. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. I'm stoked. Uh, I'm stoked to chat with you. Obviously, you know, women in sport is getting, uh, we'll call it much needed, much deserved, much anticipated, uh, if you get what I mean by that, long overdue uh, presence in media, presence in the world. Um, And I'm excited to hear about, you know, both your journey uh, before it was cool, um, but also, you know, what that's been like for you and then your experience as a leader. Before we do that, why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about you, anything that I missed, either personally or professionally? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And uh, super happy to be here. Um, So I guess, you know, really briefly, I kind of grew up in Montreal. Uh, You've mentioned rugby a lot of times. Rugby actually wasn't my first love. It was uh, I played five years of American football on our boys high school team, as well as basketball. And so I played two years of semi-pro football in Montreal for the Montreal Blitz. Uh, once I was a little bit older and played a year of um, university basketball at the University of Windsor. Um, but, you know, rugby kind of came to life more through university. I played a couple years of university at McGill. So that Windsor piece was just a little bit of an exchange. And so I have an engineering degree from McGill. Um, and yeah, it it took me on a journey with rugby about uh, just really loving the sport. Uh, when I went on my engineering co-op, I played rugby and had, you know, 30 guy and gal friends immediately in Windsor, Ontario, Fort McMurray, where I ended up be- meeting my husband uh, here in Calgary. And then eventually, uh, you know, moved moved to Calgary to uh, uh, settle down with the boy I met, Mozak, and um, then just really started taking rugby seriously. I was having a lot of fun playing rugby in the summer club scenes, club scene, excuse me. And was like, hmm, I think I could be really good at this. And then kind of everything just kind of took off about around the 2009, 2010 mark um, and got really lucky to start my national team career in 2011. That's awesome. And for those, I mean, we have listeners from all over the world. If you're not Canadian, uh, engineering at McGill is no joke either. So, you know, lots of, lots of skills there. So very cool, very cool background. Um, So, so let's talk about your leadership journey. Like, obviously, you know, it started off, it wasn't, uh, you know, intentionally rugby, you've grown through sport. Uh, I could ask you about leadership lessons in sport, um, but you're also involved in a lot of, you know, organizations supporting sport. So maybe I'll start there. You know, what's it like working on boards? How's your experience been? there um are you enjoying it do you not enjoy it and then maybe what are some lessons learned for running those type of organizations or leading organizations that you could share with our listeners yeah and i would say i've been really lucky throughout all the experiences i have to eventually get this opportunity with uh cap gemini and world rugby for their women in rugby leadership scholarship but when i think back of kind of what led me to this point i've always been this person that fights for the little guy and you know it's kind of like just a quote saying um and so when people ask me like why do you advocate why do you push for certain things um it kind of transitioned to this self-serving piece where it was women's sports women in rugby rugby specifically um but it kind of started my first board experience was really with athletes can which is an organization that rep- represents every national team athlete across the country so we were advocating to governments we were um helping uh athletes advocate to their own national sport organizations and so that's kind of where the bug really hit me about like i can affect 
change um, for others in sport. And I just think when you, you know, we shouldn't have these Olympic stories every two years where somebody literally inspire somebody to change their life through their Olympic story. We have those stories every single day in sports across the world. And so that's really where that kind of came from. And then, you know, as I got on the national team with rugby and then it was more like, okay, the rugby side and rugby was very much a male dominated sport and the funding was going to the men's side, the advertising money, the marketing opportunities, sponsorship. And I think I was so lucky with the energy that I had when I came onto the board in 2017 that there was other people in the room that thought like I did with respect to equitable um, contributions to women's sport and, and women's rugby in particular. So we did a whole bunch of, you know, probably boring governance changes, getting more women on the board, um, making sure that our women no longer had to p- pay to play. So my entire career, except for the World Cup, we you, you wrote a check, right? You wrote a check to go on tour. And so I think just the amount of global uh, energy that has gone behind women in sport, particularly women in rugby with World Rugby. They've done, you know, a whole women's rugby strap print with the engagement of Cap Gemini last year into the scholarship program in 2022. I think it just shows the power of women's sports, the energy behind women's sports. And I think we're just on this massive trajectory that's going to, you know, never hit the ceiling kind of thing. We're just going to continue to to break the glass ceiling when it comes to that type of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I, I there's I mean there's so many things that I that I take from here is you know one of them was because of that, you know, uh, little guy mentality for lack of a better word and, and sorry is you know you for you what what driven you is you're like hey, how can I how can I advocate for what's right and what's important to me and then what I hear cool about that is obviously you found opportunities to participate in programs like the one put on by Cat Gemini and you know I'm sure dozens of others but also you know looking for opportunities to support others and then you know through that led you into other board positions that you've kind of parlayed into other boards and then Mm -hmm. from that using the position of power uh you've been able to then put structural changes in place uh because you had a guiding coalition of people that saw that same vision so the benefit of being on a board or contributing at any kind of governance level is that you can make those changes and I find it's really important for leaders, whether it's in a board or whether in a senior management position, to remove the barriers for others. And, you know, you were that person back in the day, as in you played there, you lived it. And so that experience, you know, allowed you to contribute and understand, hey, what if I was in that position now, what would make such a big difference for me? And how can I make those things happen? And it sounded like in doing that, you've been able to lead that transformation. So I guess my question is, what was that like? Like, what was that like going in, being on a board, being a woman on a board that was primarily male dominated, which is the case in a lot of boardrooms, and I don't have a statistic, you know, how did you manage that? What were some challenging things? Um, You know, what are some of the successes that you want to celebrate? And what are some kind of pieces of advice you might give to other uh, leaders or women leaders that uh, are in a similar position? So, you know, just like 15 questions all at once. Go ahead. Yeah, totally. No, no worries. Um, Keep them coming. I think for me, um, humility in the sense that uh, I was going to take risks and make mistakes and that was going to be okay. And I think in the boardroom, and that I think comes from my sporting background, being able to go on the field, make mistakes, and then improve. You you can't dwell on your mistakes. You can't take no risks. It'd be a boring game to watch, right? And so I think that was kind of my mentality going into the boardroom was really like, I'm going to take a lot of risk. I'm going to come in swinging. And I think I got more and more refined over that first year, especially on the Rugby Canada board. I would say on the Athletes Can board, we are a whole bunch of athletes. We probably had like similar mindsets and similar ways of operating. When it came to the Rugby Canada boardroom, you know, incredibly smart people in the room who had been on business boards and whatnot. So that was really my first experience being, let's say, in a business boardroom um, and that, you know, decorum, Robert's rules, where you sit, uh, you know, motions and whatnot. Um, So it was scary, but I think where I got really lucky is I had really, really good mentors who kind of took me under their wing and, and have you thought about this? I would say was probably a question that I heard 
multiple times almost before every meeting or in the meeting. And I think that's kind of something that, that I try to do from a leadership perspective instead of trying to sway somebody by just saying, what about this? I say, have you thought of this? And that kind of can lead the direction. But, you know, shout out to a few people, Sally Dennis, Kathy Henderson, you know, Pat Parfrey, Doug Campbell, those individuals in the Rugby Canada boardroom really took me under their wing. And I was able to blossom because I think the risk taking part, like I mentioned earlier, was probably looking back on it was like, bang, like that was a light bulb moment. Don't be afraid in the boardroom, right? Because I don't know, when you think about the worst that can happen, it, it truly wasn't, couldn't have been that bad. And so um, once I kind of got that advice, got that mentorship, pushing for change, I really kind of understood the way a boardroom works and kind of, you know, influencing change before you even get there. Who are your advocates in the room? Who are you going to need help to convince? Um, and I think that's the same thing when you come in a, in a meeting place, when you have a bright idea, when you're trying to get approval for some big project, you want to know where everybody sits before you get into the room, right? It might be a 10-person 10, 10 approval. You basically want to know where the majority of those people sit that are, and so that was really you know, really, really helpful. And again, lucky that I had those advocates in the room for women in not only women sports and women rugby, but women leadership. And I think, you know, it's not solely about women's sport, but it's about being a role model for for another young girl, perhaps, who wants to do something in the sports industry from a leadership perspective, not necessarily even on the field. And you can't be what you can't see. And so that for me, it could even be, you know, a lot of my stuff is actually done on the men's rugby side, but I'm a strong female role model for, for young men who now maybe have a different perception of women. And I think that can be very powerful on that stream as well. Yeah. That's awesome. So let me, um, let me ask, what was it like as a player? So you talked about women and leadership. You talked about, you know, not understanding your role, but figuring out your role. And then you also talked about kind of just like growing and developing into that space. You take a bunch of risks and, and you learn over time. So, mm -hmm. you know, what was it like as a player for you entering these, like the highest of highest level of, of competition um, and your evolution as a player and, and how did your role on those teams change over your, um, I think, 20 year career or, or whatever it was? I think, I think again, find, finding your place, right? Like I think one, one really interesting things about teams is, you know, there's a captain, usually one or two captains, and then the rest is kind of not really well defined. Like you think of the workplace and you think of a manager and a supervisor and team leads and, and the hierarchy perhaps is better defined. And on a sports team, especially as it kind of rotates and in and out of selection, you're kind of finding your place every single selection, every single camp, tour, game, you know. And so I think that is probably a, a huge learning that is able then to transfer into the workplace around like finding your place and that you could be a leader, an influencer someplace, and then, then somewhere else you could be an individual contributor. And both of those are awesome. Right. Like I think being an individual contributor um, has its values, being a leader has its values. And I just think having those breadth of experiences across many different teams, I was never the captain of the national team. Right. But I found my place being an individual contributor and being, you know, kick ass at that. Hmm. Awesome. I find what's so interesting, and I, I play a lot of sport um, myself, is, you know, any, and, and I've never played at the highest level that you have, but because of the nature of international competition, it's always a new team. So like the nature mm -hmm. of it is you're always finding your roles. You're always having to create new norms. You're always having to like rebalance and like work together. It requires a high level of trust. It requires a high level of communication. The successful teams, I believe, are able to move through that form and storming norming quickly. But then like running the parallel between a board is, you know, if you've got good governance, there's good turnover, there's more new people coming in, but your ability to be successful successful in a board relies on the same things. You need to be able to trust mm -hmm. the people around you. You need to be able to communicate. You need to be able to like work through conflict and, and have the same kind of mission and purpose. W would you agree that those two things run uh, in parallel? Uh, uh, a thousand percent. I mean, when you think of sporting backgrounds, there's this really cool uh, kind of LinkedIn series by Ryan Smith right now that's going on, like what he learned when he was a national team player with the rugby team. Mm -hmm. And you think of like conflict resolution, change management, risk assessments, strat planning, 
uh, contract negotiations, marketing, forecasting, like you do all those things as an athlete. So then to get in the boardroom and do that, that was really cool for me. And then, you know, in my real daytime job, I've had tons of opportunities to do all those things. And I truly believe that my sporting background like immensely helped me there. Like it's just like a huge amount. And sometimes it's hard to transfer. When you think of yourself, you're like, oh, I was just an athlete. But when you really break it down, I think that's what's so powerful too about the the Cap Gemini current like women in rugby program is it's actually bringing all of those things to the forefront and giving you uh, mentors and coaches. And then their kept on my university programs that has a whole bunch of learning tools to really, a lot of those skills are just hiding under the surface and just bringing them to the forefront and putting a little bit more refinement on your delivery, I think is probably what's more powerful about this program is just we're, we are leaders. The 12 scholars in that program, we are leaders, but it's truly about bringing us to the next level and bring and being global influencers, which are like, even though the words just coming out of my mouth is like, how can that be me? But that's truly the power of the program, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm going to actually take, so I, I want to say something about sport is that, you know, I believe sport is just like a great development opportunity for all kids. I've got a one and a half year old, you lo- learn so many skills. Um, the thing that like stands with me is like when I hire people or work with people, like the fact they have a sporting background has that like that winning mentality and winners want to be around winners. And so like having that culture of understanding, um, there's this leadership clip I play to people all the time, whereas Joel Embiid, who is a basketball player, getting yelled at by one of the senior guys on his team, but he doesn't react to it because he recognizes that this person in senior leadership, so to speak, or experience is telling one of the star players like, hey, communicating in no uncertain way- words, you have to step it up. But I think that that like understanding among athletes is like, okay, we're on the same goal. And sometimes we might blow up at each other in an ineffective way, but a lot of the times, like we get it again, where that trust is there. Um, one of the things I've got to participate is the Young Leaders of America initiative. Um, and I met a lady named Shannon Ferguson, who's the CEO of Fan Saves. Uh, she works in sport across Canada, doing amazing things. And I was like, eh, I'll give her a shout out. So Shannon, you're doing great stuff, uh, great, cool stuff in sport. So shout out to you, shout out to women in sport. And I just think that that's really cool. So check out Fan Saves. No, they're not sponsoring the podcast, but she's awesome and doing really cool <laughs> things. And, and it's just kind of what I want to highlight again about that is that when you're when you put yourself in these environments to be put with random people mm-hmm. towards a common mission, like anything is possible. And then you kind of have your doubts. It's like, oh my gosh, all of these people are like really great. And then you realize, but wait, I'm really great. And that's why I'm here. And so like the opportunity to develop your greatness is really cool. And so Maria, that's one of the reasons I was just stoked to chat with you because you're doing great things in your community, in the community of sport, in in work, and um, just like kudos to you for that. So um, just just as we finish up here, um, what about anything you want to say? Just I kind of went off on a little tangent there, but anything you want to say about leadership, collaboration teams, anything? Yeah, I would really, I mean, I kind of started a little bit with it in terms of like failure and being okay with taking risks and failing. I think like vulnerability in general is the most incredible trait that somebody can happen that has opening up about, um, you know, things that are that are a struggle, saying that you need help, whether it comes to something at work, something at home. I think that to me is like, a true powerful team message that you can have, whether it's on the field or whether it's, you know, in a, in a business meeting here at work. Uh, when I think of team scenarios, our, our rugby team that I coach, the Mount Royal University men's rugby team, we shake hands every practice, 50 guys, you shake hands every single practice because you're opening the door and you can tell by somebody's body language, if their shake, if their shake is like, Ooh, not so great. It has been in the past. You could check in with them later. Same thing here at work. When we have meetings, we do a 20 second check-in and you can share anything you want. It can be good. It can be bad. And you can see patterns in people and somebody shares something that maybe is not so great. It's a really good opportunity to check in with them later. And so you can actually like get the energy of the team by people being vulnerable, by myself being vulnerable. I think that really opens up to that trust scenario and knowing that you're working towards a common goal, like you mentioned earlier, that that to me is really, really, really powerful. That's awesome. I think that's a great way to finish today. Uh, Maria, where can people learn more about you? Where can they learn more about the work you're doing? Um, Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm not a huge social media buff, but I do have uh, Twitter and Instagram, Maria Sampson five at uh, Instagram and Twitter, or I guess it's now X A. Eh? That's the real thing I'm supposed to say. It's too common, right? Um, and uh, on LinkedIn, Maria Sampson, find me there. Awesome. Maria, thank you for being here. Uh, it's been a blast chatting with you. And just thanks for just, just being open and sharing some amazing leadership insights. Thank you so much, Anthony. Folks, one of the things that I'm left with as we f- finish, and Maria, I don't know if you know, is like, you know, you don't have to be on social media to make a difference. Just like <laughs> get in and do the work. Um, but re- Maria, again, really, and, and folks listening, I just want to encourage you, like, there's so many opportunities to develop in your leadership. You know, it's not necessarily within the four walls of your work, but there's so many great organizations that uh, need great leaders, whether that's volunteers, whether that's on the board, whether that's, you know, community sport through coaches or what have you. Um, And so that's one of the things I'm taking away. The other is that there's micro opportunities to check in with your team to make sure to see where they're at, whether that's a handshake before and after the game, whether that's a pull check before, after a meeting, you know, your team's ability to trust each other, to show each other respect um, is is the determinant into how successful you will be in your organization, in your mission. And then, you know, I invite everybody, you know, just who are you advocating for, who are you fighting for, and that uh, you don't exactly know where it's going to end up, but if you start and get together with a bunch of uh, people with a common mission, I think that there's a lot of great upside and potential for that. So Maria, thank you again for sharing all of that with us. It was a blast. And I just appreciate you uh, being on the podcast today. Thank you so much. Folks, this has been the Strategy and Leadership Podcast. My name is Anthony Taylor. Be sure to subscribe and share if you haven't yet. Share this with a friend who's developing in their leadership. Post it on your social media so we can share more that you don't need to be on social media to be cool. The irony, I guess. Uh, (laughs) But once again, this is the Strategy and Leadership Podcast. My name is Anthony Taylor. Thank you, Maria Sampson, my guest. I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to today's episode of the Strategy and Leadership Podcast. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please consider giving us a review. We appreciate you listening and following along, and we hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. And as Anthony says, until next time.